The Amy guidelines tell me I cannot stack my blue wraps because stacking causes tears. It forces air inside the wraps, compromising the sterility and the sets need to be handled in a manner that avoids dragging and sliding from one location to the next. Clock in, scrub up, and join us behind the red line. You're listening to First Case, a perioperative podcast bringing you exciting interviews, engaging discussions, and innovative solutions that are changing the way patients receive surgical care. Each episode, we talk to frontline staff, perioperative leadership, and nursing entrepreneurs from across the country as they share their stories, experience, and expertise on the industry we love. From the back table to the boardroom, from wheels in to wheels out, we tackle the real-life issues affecting the OR. Whether you're tuning in for surgical service education or inspiration, we're glad you're here. And now, it's time to roll back and start the first case. On this Vendor Spotlight, we speak with Ian Loper, Vice President at DSI, and today we're going to be talking about integrated storage solutions. Everybody who works in the OR knows that when there's a hole in that blue wrap, boy, does it have an impact. Case delays, everybody starts scrambling. And so having a more effective solution for storing those trays, protecting them, transporting them to the OR can have a big impact on the bottom line for your operating room. So especially as you continue to increase procedures, add new surgeons, add new trays to your inventory, you may not have the space to expand the storage to accommodate that increase in volume. And so we're going to talk about how to maximize your space today, but also if you end up building a new facility, how you can maximize your space and leave room for growth in the future so that you don't find yourself in the same predicament. Stay with us. We're going to be right back with Ian Loper after a short break. A 17 Studios production, you're listening to First Case. Joining us now is Ian Loper, Vice President at DSI, and we are going to be talking about instrument storage, and in particular, Ian, your instrument storage solutions today. And I want to thank you for coming on the show, but also... The way that we prepared for this discussion today is very much in alignment with Beyond Clean and its mission. We're going to be talking about the people. We're going to be talking about the processes. We're going to be talking about the products. And then you've added a fourth P, which is the profit or the business case. And so I think the way that we're going to be doing this vendor spotlight and and having this conversation is going to be new for how we've done it before, but it's a nice flow to the conversation. So welcome to the show. I know it's your first time, but hopefully not your last time. We're really happy to have you today. Yes, sir, Justin. Glad to be here. So why don't you talk a little bit um, just about your background and maybe tell us, you know, how you find yourself, you know, providing these solutions to the industry today. Well, DSI has been around for 30 years and, you know, our focus is high density storage systems. And that's one part instrument sets in the SPD and then the other side, high density basket storage. And so we really separate ourselves through, you know, as you mentioned, our go to market strategy with the people, the process, the products and the profit. And we, we feel like that's the blueprint and really the roadmap for success at DSI. And we try to overlay that strategy with our approach to providing value to SPDs. Well, I'll tell you, it's like one of those things these days where you got to keep expanding and there isn't necessarily enough space to expand into. And so making use of the space you have or preparing for growth later and renovations this whole conversation, and it's really the reason that we dedicated an entire season to this conversation, you know, that's the reason we're talking today is because I think many managers and frontline technicians out there are living the challenges in regards to space and storage and really just the constant expansion that has been going on. So why don't we talk in in that whole flow and start with the people because i think one misconception is a lot of times people think people means just the patients right but people also means the employees and when you and i talk to prepare for this interview you really made a strong point of that is you know when we talk about people we're talking about employees 
and the patients who are receiving the care. Absolutely. So it starts with the people. It's always got to start with the people and you've got to provide them with the necessary tools to get the job done. And and within that toolbox is going to be the process and the products. And so we really overlay that strategy, as we mentioned earlier, the people, the, the process, the products. We overlay that strategy with our team and we try to implement it as we go about our day, spending time with the, the folks in the SPD, in the OR. And ultimately, we want to create a safer work environment for the employees by implementing a system designed specifically for SPDs to optimize the department's floor space, eliminate trip hazards and bottlenecks within the workflow, utilize better signage throughout, and having a storage system in place that is engineered to focus on employee safety. Yeah, that safer work environment. I mean, being a healthcare provider in the past myself before coming over to Beyond Clean and also my experience, you know, as a vendor. But I remember working as a nurse that we always kind of felt like our safety was sort of secondary to the patient. And it really shouldn't be a secondary consideration. And I think that's part of the employee buy-in is to say that, you know, your your safety is just as important. Am I right about that? Without employee care, without employee safety, the patient isn't going to get the best service. So when you think about the four walls within an SPD, you think about ergonomics, you think about pinch points, trip hazards, you think about, you know, some of the other sharp edges when it comes to storage or some of the rigid containers, you think about the lighting, you think about compliance. And so, you know, employee safety has got to be at the forefront of any big project, of any planning. And again, the downstream impact is, you know, employee morale, employee retention, process improvement, improved workflow. And again, downstream patient care, that's always got to be at the forefront when it comes to making some of these bigger decisions. Yeah, engaging the staff is such a big part of that buy-in, feeling like you have some skin in the game, so to speak, you know, whenever a change is being made and understanding the why behind it. So you mentioned process improvement and enhanced workflow, but then also on the patient side, you kind of said something about, you know, sterility and being able to improve that. So what are some of the ways that you really improve sterility with your solution? Yeah, so sterility when it comes down to within the OR, within the suite, during a procedure, one of the first tasks that takes place is to unwrap that present, that blue wrap. And if there's holes in that blue wrap, what happens? You have to reprocess that set. Why? Because there's a good chance that it could be unsterile. And so if we can create a process, a system in which it delivers that package that is sterile that will help with patient care that will help with overall sterility throughout the process within the SPD through the elevator into the OR suite, like I said. You know, everybody is kind of keenly aware that case delays or cancellations cost the organization money. Right. But at the same time, that can impact patient care as well, because you don't necessarily know where they're at in the process. So what about just the consideration around preventing or reducing, you know, case delays and cancellations? Yeah, so. That's the goal is to, again, focus on patient care during that process. If there are delays with a procedure with a hole or puncture or tear in a blue wrap, we have a storage system that enables that wrap to be cultivated in a very, very safe manner. Again, from prep and pack to transport to storage, and that system is our Modumax CTS system. We call it our, our no-tear system, and it's one part case cart, one part workstation, one part transport cart, and the last part, more importantly, is the storage element. It's really through not stacking that blue-wrapped instrument, and it enables the employee within the SPD to not drag that larger, heavier set that is usually stacked within a wire shelf 
to enable them to better handle that system, transport it, and not touch the blue wrap ever again from prep and pack all the way up to the OR. So it's really a no-tear system. Yeah, I love that. No tear and nothing can be more frustrating, again, than finding that out once you've already picked the case cart and it's up there in the room and people are getting ready to set up and they're looking and they're finding these holes in the blue wraps. And we have a lot of, you know, as we talk about process, we have guidelines in the industry to help us through that. And I think that whenever you're making a case for looking at ways to improve your processes, it's got to be based in guidelines, recommended practices, best practices, that really has to anchor how we make, you know, sort of an argument for either bringing on a new product or changing our our policies or our procedures about how we continue to deliver safe patient care. So let's talk about some of those guidelines. Can you give us a review of Amy ST79 11.1 as it relates to our conversation today? This is where process comes in. And whether it's OSHA or JCO or Amy, you know, there's, there's guidelines out there and it's up to the hospital to either comply or not. And I'm not a black belt within Amy, but I, I do know and can comprehend exactly what these specifications are stating. And I'm going to read a few to you here. 11.1.1, stacking can result in damage to the wrap caused by undue pressure from the weight. Compression of packages can force air and microorganisms into the package contents, which lead to contamination. Sterile items should be handled in a manner that avoids dragging, sliding, crushing, bending, compressing, or puncturing the packaging. The Amy guidelines tell me I cannot stack my blue wraps because stacking causes tears. It forces air inside the wraps, compromising the sterility and the sets need to be handled in a manner that avoids dragging and sliding from one location to the next. Yeah, so critical what you just said, a couple of these things, but I'm not sure everybody's always aware of the compression of packages, forcing air and microorganisms into the package contents. I know that's word for word, but I don't think everybody always thinks about that in terms of stacking. What comes to mind more often than not is the dragging or the sliding when you're pulling that top set off the another one. That's really an event. If you're doing event-related sterilization, that's an event not just to the wrap set that you're pulling, but the wrap set that it was sitting on top of that you're dragging along as well. And so that absolutely does represent challenges for sterility for the patient, and it can result in case delays and and is a huge issue. So uh, thank you for, for bringing that up. Yeah, absolutely. So just think about the journey of that blue wrap, right? From prep and pack, it gets transported, it's handled, it gets shoved into a shelf on top or in the middle of a few other blue wraps. It sits there for a day or two or three or five. Then it gets pulled and then it gets pushed back onto a transport cart. Then it gets pulled again. Then it gets put back into a case cart. Then it gets pulled again up in the OR suite and placed on a Mayo stand. And so you're thinking about thinking about the handling of this blue wrap. It's a precious Fabergé egg, it's handled just way too much. And so if you put a process in place that minimizes the amount of touch points, if you put a product in place that forces the operation to become more efficient and reduce the amount of times this blue wrap is handled, then you're going to be miles and miles ahead of everybody else when it comes to sterility within the process of delivering this blue wrap to the OR suite. You know, and sometimes just organization is such a challenge, right? Especially when, you know, you're picking and then you're putting back. And like you said, think about the life cycle of that wrap set and the back and forth. Just because it goes up to the OR doesn't mean that it always comes right back down, goes into decon and just follows the normal process. Sometimes they get put away when they're unused as well. So that, you know, sometimes can really be a challenge to organization, don't you think? So the... Organization, it's just like a kitchen. If you have your utensil drawer and you don't have an organizer for separating the knives from the forks 
forks to the spoons, that's a problem. You're not organized. It's not just one open drawer and you just throw everything in there. And that's basically what a traditional wire shelf is. You cannot separate the inventory in an organized manner such that to become more efficient, to maximize the space. It's really a kind of a Tetris effect. You want to be able to control that location or, or that inventory within a small space, that small blue wrap in a small space in a small storage unit, basically designed specifically for that size and shape. A traditional wire shelf does not allow you to do that whatsoever. So if you want to maximize the cube, if you want to enhance the workflow, if you want to reduce the tears with the blue wraps, if you want to have access to the rigid containers and the handle and the front and the back for those larger ortho sets that are sometimes, you know, beyond compliance and 30, 40, 50 pounds, you have to ergonomically have a storage system that is designed specifically for this department and to handle this inventory. And that's what DSI has. And it's not just for wrap sets too, right? Like we're talking about anything with an expiration in sterile supply storage too. And, you know, that's kind of different than event related, which we obviously just talked about a second ago. Yeah. So we have a system for blue wraps. We have a system for the variety of different rigid containers, and we have a system for peel packs. Along with that, it's a high-density basket system, an ISO system that was adopted out of Europe for the last 20, 30 years. And we brought this system over about 15, 20 years ago and have introduced this system into the market for the last few decades. And so that's where the system approach comes into play. It's sterile supplies, it's blue wraps, it's peel packs, it's rigid containers, and then it's some of the other bulk packs as well. So it's a wide range of product offering that is tailor-made for SPD storage. So I think this leads us right into the third P, which is products. And you've alluded to it a little bit, but I really want to paint the picture for the audience to really think about what this would look like in their department. And I think one of the most important points you were making there was that it's truly integrated, that it does all these different things, and then it brings it into one system conceptually that is flexible and can meet all the needs. Am I right about that too? Yes, sir. And it's a system, as as you alluded to. They could also stand alone. And it starts with the storage element. So it's the storage system for handling the blue wraps, the rigid containers, the peel packs. That's part one. It's a high density system. It's engineered, designed specifically around this type of inventory. The second part is our, our newer product, which is the Triton case cart. And this really rolls everything together, which makes it an integrated system. And it's a very unconventional design within a conventional design. So it looks like a case cart. It is a case cart, but the internal workings are a little bit different. Standard case carts out there in the field for the last 40 years have basically been fairly boilerplate with bells and whistles added over the years. But what we've done is designed our modular shelving system within the box. And it's basically a divider system that divides the cabinet in a variety of different ways to handle smaller wire shelves that were used to, to store blue wraps. And so you basically take this wire shelf with a blue wrap on it, not touching the blue wrap, you pull it out of the storage system and you slide it right into the case cart and its dedicated location and its dedicated home in increments of three inches. So you're able to adjust this smaller shelf in increments of three inches to maximize the cube, have a dedicated location and not stack the blue wraps. So it's, it's, much different than the standard market with the the flat wire shelf that you could potentially pull out if you'd like to. We do have that product, but this is more of an integrated system where you've got the storage element, you've got the transport cart element, and you've got the case cart element all working together, making it a complete standardized system. What I really loved about 
like just looking at the pictures with the wire shelves and the customization opportunity, it's not so customized that they can't all be used together. It's customized in the way that you get just what you need with still the ability to, for everything to work together nice and easy. So there's some standardization, but the standardization is built around customization, which I just thought was, was really cool. And looking at that case cart piece, the, the whole not having to drag or pull the wrap set off, but just taking that wire basket or that wire shelf out it really stabilizes that blue wrap and protects it. And then no matter what your configuration is, you know, the case cart can adapt, you know, to that configuration. And so, you know, a lot of it just has to do with kind of understanding your inventory and making sure that, that you have the right sized baskets and shelves for what your inventory is. Yeah. And that's, that's why we have boots on the ground. That's why we have our own employees. We don't use manufacturing reps. We have our own employees. We've got reach from coast to coast across the country. We go out, we're project planners. We measure the space. We measure the inventory. We basically do an audit of the space of the inventory and custom configure a product, a storage system around your inventory. We, we sit down at the table. We bring the different heads together. We, we, we bring people down from the C-suite. We bring people, the text to the group. We understand what the customer's needs are, what the constraints are within the department. We take out the tape measure and make sure everything's going to fit. We under try to get a good feel for what future expansion looks like and go back to the drawing board and figure out room flow and, and really design a system around the department, around the four walls, around what the operation wants to achieve, which is to optimize the floor space, get compliant, increase the department's efficiencies, and make the appropriate equipment changes to address employee safety and maximize productivity. What you're really describing is this consultative approach with an eye towards the future so that you don't get pigeonholed and have to do this all over again from soup to nuts. And I think really there's two scenarios, right? You're either moving into a new building or you're renovating or you're trying to take advantage of the space that you have today. So, you know, you were just talking about sort of that process, but I want to move us into the business case discussion because this is really where I think the industry often needs so much help, right? When, when you start talking about making an investment, a lot of times it's a capital investment, but not always, but many times it is a capital investment. So you've got to show ROI or you've got to show cost avoidance, but somebody who holds the purse strings needs to say, yes, I approve this. We can see the benefits as an organization, but I'm not sure that you know, managers are always empowered with the right information to make that business case. And I think this is where, you know, really our discussion today and your approach to supporting the industry is really helpful is how do you make that business case? I think maybe we approach each one of those situations differently. How do you start to make the business case when you're moving to a new site or renovating your existing space and you're going to have more space as a result of that? That's a great question, Justin. And, and we see ourselves as a partner within the hospital system. Hospitals can't necessarily operate without vendor support. And we are literally, we see ourselves as, as a unit. And, you know, we understand hospitals are in business to provide patient care within the region. But on the other hand, Hospitals are in business to make a profit. And we understand that within the OR, that's viewed as the profit center. We understand SPD with all the inventory and, and, and equipment in the SPD within the four walls. That's really viewed as a cost center. And we've structured our business to focus solely on those departments as well as supply chain and materials management, but really hone our focus in on OR and SPD. Those are the profit centers and those are the cost centers. So that's where the profit and cost management come into play and where DSI's value proposition is the strongest in terms of customer facing benefits and their return on their investment. As we see it, hospitals have two options. If they're busting at the seams, they were 
structured and planned for, you know, 15, 20 years ago with 10 OR suites. And now all of a sudden they have 20 OR suites and their inventory has gone up. Customer has two options. They either invest in more space efficient storage equipment like DSI's high density product range, or they blow walls out with the renovation project or move to a new building in order to generate new space, which comes at a much steeper cost to the business. And those two options are are pretty compelling and and extreme in in both cases. One is extreme cost and disruption to the operation. And the other is less costly, less invasive, and easily implemented in a timely manner. So doing a new construction, does that always mean that the issues that you've had in the past are just going to be solved for the future? Like, does building a new department or moving to a new space solve all the problems that may have plagued you previously? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. These new buildings and then the new space, what happens is some of these hospitals drop major capital on on the new space and they just put the same storage equipment inside the space. So they're going to have the exact same problem. They're going to have tears and blue wraps. They're going to have workflow issues. They're going to have you know, space constraints, maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but maybe three, four or five years from now uh, as they continue to grow. And so hospitals need to really start to think about efficiencies, about more longer term plans, not necessarily a Band-Aid approach, but more efficient equipment within an SPD or even an OR for that matter. So Ian, I really like how you connected the cost center and the profit center, right? Because they really are hand in hand. They cannot make profit if the cost center is not working properly. Can you just kind of summarize for us, you know, when it comes to making the business case on the cost avoidance or the cost center's impact and the profit center impact? Like, what are some key bottom line takeaways for why you should invest in using your current space, doing it better? And doing it in a better way so that the packaging, the sterile packaging is not damaged because that hits both. It hits the cost center and it hits the profit center. So let's just look at option one, which is very standard to to either move to a new building or renovate, push walls out and, and generate new space and, you know, Rob Peter to pay Paul. According to the Construction Cost Index, which is a nationally known construction index, they state the average construction cost per square foot is over $300 within the hospital industry across the U.S. So if a customer chooses to renovate and they want to add 1,000 square feet, 2,000 square feet, it would cost them nearly $300,000, $300 $300,000 to $600,000, not including new storage equipment versus the equivalent of a single one-time investment and let's say $100,000 in our equipment. So that cost variable is three to six times the cost in terms of your options if you want to grow your space. And so for us, that is potential profit down the line. It's a huge cost, but there's a profit tag to that around there as well. So, okay. But what about some of the other things like employee retention, right? Because at the very beginning of this conversation, we talked about how oftentimes care providers put themselves second, but when we talk about people, we weren't just talking about the patients. And a large part of this conversation has been around maintaining the integrity of the sterile packaging. But You know, it costs a lot of money to replace employees in the department, and it's not always that they're leaving, you know, because they're unhappy. Sometimes they're leaving because the ergonomics of the job that they're doing, they wind up on workers' comp. And so I got to think that there's some savings and some efficiencies to be had in that regard, too. These sterile processing departments, some of them are immaculate. Some are brilliant. You've got Windows, they're very clean. You can look outside. They're very efficient. It's a good employee morale. There's a lot of SPDs out there that are underserved, underloved, underinvested, not designed very well, and not up to code, and are out of compliance in a very challenging work environment. So even simple things like the lighting, simple things such as labeling, Simple things such as having safe equipment to work with. Those are no-brainers. And 
you know, some of these decisions are made by people who have never stepped foot in that SPD. So if you want to retain your employees and increase your productivity and have your resources perform at their best, you have to provide them with the necessary tools. And that comes down to the proper washing machines, the proper workstations, the proper scopes, the proper magnifying glasses, the proper storage systems in a safe working environment to get up to code, to get up to compliance that will retain your employees, you'll keep them around, and you won't have to spend so much money replacing employees every couple months. You're going to be able to retain some of your best assets, and that's your people. Yeah, that is a big underrated impact on budgets in hospitals. And whether you're spending the money in areas where you could have saved or that cost avoidance piece, or you're actually having the case delays and the cancellations that's decreasing the profit, it all hits the organization on the bottom line the same way. So the more efficient we work with less issues, the more financially sound the organization is. And then that frees up capital to continue investing in other areas. And I think that's something that sometimes just is not discussed enough. And I'm glad we put that into the context of not only what we, what we talked about, you know, a no tear system, but also as it relates to employees and the cost of turnover, because it's substantial. And when you have a shortage in workforce, you end up paying quite a premium for travelers. So that comes into play as well. And so I think this is uh, an excellent way to keep people safe and working and happy. And at the same time, making sure that everything goes off without a hitch in the operating room. So Ian, really great job on this podcast. Appreciate your time today. Is there anything you want to add before we close? Yeah, just we see ourselves as partners. We really do want to help. We want to serve those who serve others. And we've been doing that for the last 31 years. We do feel like we have a template to go to market to to help within the SPD and the OR and supply chain to help the people, help the employees, help the patients, help the process with a product. And we couple that as our blueprint. We use that here at DSI. We want to instill that within the hospital. And ultimately, it is bottom line, people, process, product, and profit. I would make sure my people are happy and they have the right tools to get the job done. Within that tool bag, you've got to have the right processes and you've got to have the right products. Ultimately, what falls out of that funnel is a profit that you can reinvest back into the hospital system. So absolutely, we're here to help. We're here to serve those who serve others. Well, we talked a lot about DSI's integrated storage system. Very flexible, and I want you to go see for yourself. Visit the website, dsidirect.com, and then if you have questions, you can email them, cs at dsidirect.com. Ian is super active on LinkedIn, and you know we love that here at First Case. Social media, being active and sharing information and education is a big part of what we do, so you can follow Ian Loper and the rest of his team on LinkedIn. You can also find the company on Instagram, and you're going to see before and after pictures, new product announcements, etc. So again, Ian, great job on this show today. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks, Justin. Appreciate it. That was Ian Loper, Vice President at DSI, and we are talking about a no-tear modular and customizable integrated storage solution. And another thing we touched on was really the framework of the business at DSI. We talked about people, processes, and products, but we also talked about a fourth P, which is profit, and really making a business case for better utilizing the space that is available in sterile processing departments. And I think that one of the things that really stuck out to me is how much people matter to Ian and his team at DSI, specifically around getting the frontline technicians 
involved in that process and putting employee safety at the forefront as well, instead of always making that such a secondary consideration. Obviously, we're all here to provide patient care and ensure that everything that we wrap that gets to the OR maintains sterility. And we don't want to lose dollars in sterile processing because of case delays and case cancellations and all of that. But so I really think this integrated storage system with specialized case carts, modular shelving options, and really preventing stacking. We had a nice review of the Amy ST79 guidelines in our conversation with Ian today as well. I want to remind everybody you can head on over to the website, dsidirect.com, or you can email cs at dsidirect.com for more information. Make sure to follow Ian and the rest of his team on LinkedIn, and you can find DSI Direct on Instagram. And they're going to be posting before and after pictures, plus there's already a bunch of content like that on there, and they'll be announcing new products as well. That's going to do it for this week's show, but as a reminder, you can help support First Case by subscribing on Apple, Amazon, or Google Podcasts, as well as Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or just search for First Case on your favorite podcast application. We've also got bonus content for certain episodes. All you got to do is download our smartphone app for iPhone and Android. And while you're there, we'd certainly appreciate a rating and a review because your feedback is important to the show. Thank you for listening to this Vendor Spotlight on First Case.